Hey everyone, welcome back to the Analytical Coding. I am back with Time Intelligence series video. So in part 3, we will be learning how to calculate month to date, quarter to date and year to date values in Power BI using dates MTD and total MTD and their QTD and YTD counterparts. So by the end of this video, you will be confident to apply these in real reports and ACE interview questions. So before jumping into DAX, let's quickly understand what MTD, QTD and YTD mean. So MTD that is month to date. So the totals from the start of the current month up to the date in the current context. That means if we select a date that is 12th June. So this MTD returns starting of the month date to the 12th June. So that is about the MTD and about QTD. So it is quarter to date. That is totals from the start of the quarter up to the selected date and similarly YTD that is year to date totals from start of year to the selected date. So these are used to track performance during an ongoing period. So let us see the functions we are having in Power BI DAX for these calculations. So the first one is dates MTD. So this function returns a table that contains a column of dates from the beginning of the month to the latest date in the current context. So coming to its syntax, so dates MTD and it takes one argument that is dates, a column containing the dates and what it returns? It returns a table of dates from the start of the current month up to the last visible date in the filter context. So let us see an example to understand this quickly. I have created a measure that is calculate sum of orders amount and I have given the filter as dates MTD date column returns the all the dates from the starting of the month to the date in the current context. This calculate function calculates the sum of orders amount for the returned dates table. Let us add this measure into our table, right? So whenever I add this measure into the table, you can see. So on first chance, we are having order amount 4230 and that is being displayed for this month to date. And for second chance, we do not have any orders. So zero plus this particular amount. Again, it is displaying 4230. And for third Jan, this function returns the dates from the starting of the month to the current context date, that is 3. So from 1, 2, 3. So this function returns the 3 dates and this calculate will calculate the sum of orders amount for all the 3 days. So here 4230 plus 0 plus 3184, which returns this 7414. And again for 4, so it returns from 1 to 4. So that means calculating the sum of orders amount from the first date to the fourth date. So in this way, we can calculate the sum of sales or any measure from the month starting to the current context date. So for that, we will be using this dates MTD function, right? And coming to an interview question, so they may ask us, so what is the purpose of dates MTD in Power BI? So as we know, it helps to return a range of dates from the beginning of the month, which is commonly used to calculate month to date values inside a calculate function. Moving on to the next function that is dates QTD. So this function returns a table containing dates from the start of the quarter to the last date in the current context. So similarly, it will be taking the one argument that is dates, a column containing the dates and returns a table of dates from the beginning of the quarter to the last visible date. So I have created a similar measure for this as well, which calculates the sum of orders amount. And here it uses the dates QTD function. And whenever I add this measure into this table, so you can see here. So for the first month, it will be returning the same values as of the dates MTD and after the first month you can see on 1st Feb this dates MTD function returns the sum of orders amount on the 1st February whereas this dates QTD will sum up the all the sales amount from 1st to 31st and again adds this sales amount on 1st Feb to this value. So as we are calculating the quarter to date sales that means it calculates the sum of orders amount 
for entire quarter that is from the starting of the quarter to the current date in that quarter so in this way it sums up all the dates until the end of the quarter so you can see on 31st march this is 274000 but on 1st april you can see it has changed because this is the new quarter right so in this way we can calculate the sum of orders amount on dates qtd and similarly we are having dates ytd so this function also returns a table with dates from the start of the year to the last date in the current filter context so this function accepts the dates argument along with that it accepts an optional argument that is year end date so where we can provide the year end date so i have created a similar measure for that and here you can see we are calculating some of orders amount and use it this dates ytd whenever i add this measure into this table so you can see that so 4230 it is similar and it adds up to the end of the year so you can see on 31st december so we are having the order amount sum from the 1st jan 2025 to the 31st december 2025 so this is sum of entire year orders and there may be an interview question that is how dates ytd work with fiscal years that means so here as i already told it takes an optional argument where we can enter the year end date right so here i have created an another example where we have used this fiscal year that is 31st march as the year end date and let us see that clearly on 31st March how the data is. So on 31st March you can see 2,74,000 and on 1st April you can see 2,77,000 when we have used the default one. And now let us click on enter and see how this function returns. So here you can see until 31st March it considered April 1st 2024. 31st March 2025 as a whole year and it returned this sum of orders amount and from the 1st April it considered it as an another fiscal year and it has started from that date itself and you can see the value is changed compared to the previous one right so in this way we can change the year end date directly inside the dates ytd function so that is about the dates ytd and moving on to the next function that is total mtd so this total mtd function unlike dates mtd evaluates the expression for the month to date returning a single value so in case of dates mtd we have seen it returns a table of dates from the starting to the current context whereas this total mtd function calculate the expressions based on the start of the month to the current context and here you can see it takes three arguments that is expression that is which we want to calculate and the dates column and the filter is optional we can provide any specific filter this total mtd will return a single scalar value representing the total from start of the month to the current date now let us see an example on this as well so here i have used total mtd function and calculated the sum of orders amount for this date column right and now whenever i add this into the table you can see it is similar to that of the month to date order amount right so as it is calculating the so in month to date order amount measure we have used the dates mtd function and calculate function whereas in total sales mtd we are only using the total mtd and then we are calculating the sum of orders amount for from the starting of the month to the current context date value we can also provide the filter inside this total mtd function for whichever orders the order status is delivered i want to calculate the count of order id and whenever i click on enter so here you can see on 5th jan it shows the total sales mtd as 1 that means whenever i go to the table view and here you can see where is the delivered yes here the ordered status is delivered and the date is 5th jan so that is why it is displaying for 5th jan the count of order id which is delivered is 1 there may be an interview question that do we need calculate 
with the total MTD function? So we can answer like, so you can use total MTD inside calculate, but in most cases it is unnecessary. So total MTD already returns the value directly, but we use calculate only when we want to apply extra filters alongside the total MTD. So you can answer in this way. And moving on to the next function that is total QTD. This function calculates the value for the quarter to date from the start of the quarter to the current context. So similarly, it is taking an expression, dates and filter condition. So let us see an example for this as well. So here we are calculating the total QTD that is sum of orders amount and let us add this. So you can see that this total sales QTD is returning the sum of the orders amount from the starting of the quarter to the current context date. So that is about the total QTD and moving on to the next function that is total YTD. So this total YTD function returns the year to date total for a given measure or expression. So similarly, it takes the expression, dates, filter and it also takes the year end date which we have seen for the dates YTD, right? So this function returns a single value for total from start of the year to the current date in the context. So I have similarly written a measure. So where we are calculating the orders amount for the total YTD. And whenever I add this measure into our table, so you can see this returns similar to that of the year to date sales. On 31st March here in this total sales YTD, we haven't provided any year end date as 31st March, right? So we haven't provided that. That is why it is being calculated continuously. Whereas here we have provided the 31st March as the year end date and that is why from the 1st April it is reset, right? So that is all about the MTD, QTD and YTD functions. And if you found this video helpful, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.